With the launch of the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, there was a ton of AI talk. And among that AI talk was something more specific, Gemini, which is Google's LLM, Gemini Nano, I should be specific. And as part of the December Pixel feature drop, the Pixel 8 Pro got a handful of new features running Gemini Nano actually locally on the device. That is a big distinction because currently almost every AI thing you do, well, I should say modern AI thing, there's lots of AI things going on on your phone, but you know what I mean. The stuff like Magic Editor, things like that. This is happening in the cloud. Gemini itself, the assistant replacement, is running in the cloud. But this Gemini Nano integration to the Pixel 8 Pro is running directly on the device to do things like a summarization of your recorder app, smart replies for Gboard, a few kind of small things like that. And it's supposed to roll out into more features later on, but for now, as of December, that is what it's currently doing locally on the device. Now it's also doing similar things on Samsung's S24 line of phones, but unfortunately, it won't be doing things like that on the standard Pixel 8, Google citing hardware limitations. Now, some of you may hear that and immediately raise an eyebrow because of course the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro are remarkably similar with the only real difference being the amount of RAM that they have. They are both running the same Tensor G3 processor. We're talking about 12 gigs RAM on the 8 Pro and 8 gigs of RAM on the standard 8. So effectively what they're saying is you need more than 8 gigs of RAM to run Gemini Nano locally on the device. But let's dig in here a little bit because there's already more trouble with this claim. 9 to 5 Google here rightly points out that the entry level S24 also has 8 gigs of RAM and it uses on-device Magic Compose in Google Messages. So how is Samsung running Gemini Nano on a base model S24 with eight gigs of RAM? In some regions, it's using an Exynos processor. It's not even running the newest Snapdragon, and yet it's capable of doing this. This kind of reminds me back in the day, I talk about this quite often, when we were all told that uh, Magic Eraser required the Tensor chip, and then only weeks after that, people had backported it to older Snapdragon running pixels because that was simply not true. And I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that this quote, Nano will not be coming to Pixel 8 because of hardware limitations, that's also probably not true. To go a step further, we also know that Gemini Nano is set to run on phones running the Dimensity, what is it, 9300 and 8300. So we can't really say that it's the processor limiting anything. It just has to be a somewhat modern, relatively fast processor. And we can't really say it's the 8 gigs of RAM because we've seen it running on phones with 8 gigs of RAM. So what is the actual holdup here? It's not the hardware, guys. Let's be honest. This is just not, it's just not true. It comes down to this. There's only really two options here. Option number one, plain devil's advocate, is that there is some hardware limitation that isn't in the processor and it isn't in the RAM. There's something else here that we just aren't uh, calculating for. I find that to be Somewhat unlikely, but I cannot rule it out as a possibility. It just seems unlikely to me. Or two, they are artificially restricting these features to the Pixel 8 Pro to further push the sales of that device. Now, that is a particularly troubling explanation to what's going on here because we're talking about two devices that are both said to be getting seven years of updates, and yet only a few months on, we're already seeing artificial limitations being created for features. Now look, I have no problem with the highest end model of your phone having exclusive features, but I do have a problem with dishonesty. I do have a problem with having those features be 100% possible on the lower end models and just artificially restricting them. And that is what it sounds like, what it feels like is going on here. Until Google can give a better explanation, show us whatever this hardware limitation is, that's kind of what I have to assume is going on here. And it definitely does not feel good, especially 
in the light of what's going on with the Pixel Fold as we fold users watch older devices running the same hardware get features like circle to search while we still don't have it. It's beginning to feel a little bit like a pattern here for Google. And don't get me wrong, I'm a big Google Pixel fan. I have owned, I've purchased with my own money more Pixel phones than any other phone brand on the planet. I always want to go back to them. Even my recent frustration with the Pixel Fold and taking my SIM out and putting it in the OnePlus Open, I will freely admit to you that only a day into that, I should say when I was only a day into it, this was several days ago, looking at my Pixel Fold and thinking, I kind of want to put my SIM back in there. I miss my Pixel Fold. I miss that form factor. I miss the software. But I'm also frustrated by this kind of stuff. Google, I don't like it. I don't think anybody likes it. I think anybody paying attention is going to get a bad vibe from this sort of behavior. Now, you know me, guys. I don't like to focus on negative things. I don't like to bring too much attention to negative stories like this. But I also believe in calling a spade a spade. And unfortunately, right now, as much good as Google is doing, there are a few things where they are just not doing what they need to be doing. They're doing stuff that you're forcing my hand, Google. I don't want to be negative. I don't want to make these videos, but I don't know what else to do. I can't just ignore it, right? Because then people are going to be like, Shane only talks about the good stuff with Google. He never talks about the negative. So I have to. I have to be here. I have to point this stuff out. I have to be honest. I have to bring these news stories uh, the attention that I think that they deserve because everyone needs to be held accountable uh, even phone brands that are towards the top of my favorite list. What do you guys think about this, though? Am I making, what is the saying, a mountain out of a molehill? Or is this truly a bad precedent that is being set here, that we can have two phones both capable of running the same things, and we're going to say, this one can't run it for reasons, and we're only going to put it on the most expensive phone because we want you to buy that most expensive phone. Sound off in those comments down below, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.